Rectification in electronics usually refers to the conversion of a waveform, something sinusoidal that goes up and down, into a nice steady form. The most common version is converting alternating current, AC, into direct current, DC. Alternating current goes back and forth, back and forth through the circuit, whereas direct current goes only one way. Alternating current and direct current each have their uses, that's why we don't stick to one or the other. Alternating current is easier and cheaper to transmit over long distances, and it's also in the exact form that's best for motors, such as vacuum cleaners and washing machines, whereas direct current is the best thing for logic circuits, for amplification like your speaker system on your stereo. You will have heard of bridge rectifiers, full bridge rectifiers, full wave rectifiers. Those are all basically the same thing when you boil it down. So let's have a visual to make this more clear. Let's visualize voltage in AC and DC with a graph. So the horizontal axis is time. This is whenever we start measuring and this is as we continue on. This axis is voltage. So we have zero volts here. We have plus whatever here. Let's say plus five for fun, and minus five here. Now, positive and negative voltage is just a different direction. If you have your circuit and you measure the voltage, let's say from here to here, you're going to get minus five volts because the current is going this way, because it's coming out the positive end according to conventional current. The electrons are coming out that end, but the way we do it mathematically, it's coming out of that end. So if you measure it from here to here, you get plus 5. From here to here, you get minus 5. That's all that the minus means. So in alternating current, the current is going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth because the voltage is going positive and negative. Direct current, it's just going one way. So we have 5 volts in one direction, 5 volts in the other, and 0 volts means it's not going anywhere. So if we have direct current, let's say we have a 3.3 volt direct current. It'll look something like this. And of course, there'll be fluctuations due to other factors, but the point is, it's roughly 3.3 volts the whole time. It's always going in the same direction. It's always just as strong. That's it. Direct current is just a horizontal line on this plot. Alternating current is this. I'm obviously not a draftsman. Don't worry about it. The point is, the voltage goes to zero, then it gets more and more and more in one direction up to a peak. It goes back down to zero, goes negative, back up to zero. This is called a sinusoidal. You may have heard of it in trigonometry, but you don't have to worry about that right now. It just goes up and down and up and down in a regular cycle. When it goes from zero, up and down, down and up, and back to zero. You can see, like, if you take a picture of this, copy, paste, 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 paste. The minimum that you can copy and paste and be able to reassemble this is called one period. How much time goes by is called one wavelength, in this case and how many of these per second is called the frequency. In the United States, we use 60 hertz. That means 60 times a second. It'll go from zero to positive to zero to negative to zero, uh, roughly 60 times a second. Over in Europe, it's 50. Now you might say, what is the magnitude of this? Because you've heard of things like, we have 120 volt AC here in the United States, but it's not one number. How do you say it's 120 volt? It's something called root mean square. Basically, you just sample it here, 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 here. Every time you sample it, you square it, add them together, and then take the square root. Sort of like this. The voltage as of root mean square is square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 squared plus da 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 da. So there's two reasons to do it this way. One is, every time you square the voltage, you get rid of the positive and negative. Because otherwise, if you add them up, you're just going to get zero because they're going to perfectly balance. So this means you're always measuring the voltage. Whichever way it's going, you're trying to figure out how strong it is, not which way it's going. The other reason is the root mean square calculation is particularly useful in giving us a usable number. That's what it's all about, a number that's useful, not necessarily meets any sort of arbitrary standard for correctness. It's the number that best represents what's going on here. When you've got all the little bits and the big bits all together, root mean square for theoretical statistical reasons, 
ends up giving you the best result for actually using this. So if you have a voltmeter that measures alternating current, it's doing a root mean square. It's sampling over time and giving you that root mean square. Whereas a voltmeter that's sampling direct current is just sample and show you, sample and show you, direct numbers. So what does rectification actually do? So let's go back to our AC signal. So first of all, the problem is we have current going backwards, which is going to destroy all of our stuff, such as integrated circuits that don't expect the current to be going backwards through all their delicate machinery. So we basically want to get rid of this. Well, the perfect tool for that is a diode. A diode is your device that allows current to flow in one direction, but not the other. So if you try to put your voltage across it this way, then it just passes it on through with a small drop. If you try to put it through this way, stop. So that sounds like the perfect tool. So if we have a diode that allows current through when it's in this direction, but doesn't in this direction, then we get this, there. Now your circuit is safe. Current is never running in the opposite direction. But as you can obviously see, we're wasting half of our power. It's just, we're just throwing it away. So what we do then is a little trick called full wave rectification. We flip it up this way. So basically, when it's flowing in this direction, we don't do anything. When it's flowing in this direction, we make it flow backwards. Normal backwards, normal backwards. How do we do that? Well, I'll show you in a minute. So you may look at this voltage and say, that's really bumpy. That's nothing like DC. And that's true. If you took the average value, such as the root mean square, you could get a number, but that is not an accurate representation anymore of what's going on. Alternating current driving a motor, root mean square is an excellent measure. This kind of nonsense trying to drive an integrated circuit? No. Today's video is actually going to stop with this explanation. A future video will show how to use things like capacitors to smooth this out into a nice steady DC signal. But for now, I'm just showing you what rectification is, because this is rectification. That's the end of it. It's rectified, you're done. Making it nicer is step two. So first of all, let's say we have a power supply. This is an AC power supply. It's going back and forth, so don't worry about the polarity right now. Then we have our load. That's just the thing we're doing. Whatever it is, that's the thing we're doing. And then all we need, all we need to get a rectification is four diodes. They're very cheap. Now, of course, you're going to have a transformer also to step down the 120 volt or 220 volt or whatever to something more usable like 18 volt or even 5 volt. But that's a different topic. If you had a generator that produced 5 volt AC, this is exactly what you do. Transformers are a step before this. Let's just say whatever voltage we have, that's about what we want to keep. So four diodes. In a rather charming, I think, diamond pattern, of course, they can be arranged however you want on your board and however you want on your circuit diagram. Of course, we have our junctions, four of those. So we hook it up as follows. Now remember the directions these diodes are going. It's positive to negative is the flow. And the triangle, if we're using conventional current flow again, the triangle represents almost like an arrow saying it goes this way. So it goes in, 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 in. So first we connect our diodes. Nice and easy. We just connect the diodes in a circle or diamond or square, whatever you want, all together. Then let's connect our power. We're going to connect our power up here. Connect our power down here. Remember, it's AC. It's going in both ways. And then we're going to connect our load. Connect it here and connect it. Skip over. Don't connect these wires. Connect it there. I've used three colors to try and make it more clear. So this basically makes it so that the power supply is providing current that way and 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 that way. And that way. But it's always, no matter what, going that way. So when that's going that way, it's going this way over here. When that's going that way, it's still going this way over here. Let's show this. So let's say it's going this way. This is one half of the cycle. Whatever value it's at, it's going that way. So think about the way the current tries to go. So we'll start at the positive end. So it tries to go up here into this junction, and then it tries to go both ways. So it tries to go over this way, but it's blocked by this diode. So it goes this way. 
goes through this diode just fine. See the arrow? Now it comes to this junction, tries to go both ways again, but it's blocked by this diode, so it goes this way. Through the load, up through here, and again at this junction it tries to go both ways again. And you say, oh, it's not blocked by this diode, because it's going in the right direction. But remember, over here we have the power fresh, ready right out of the oven. So it's at the maximum voltage minus whatever tiny loss has occurred over this wire. But on the other end of this diode, it has gone around here, around here, through the load. The load is doing work. The load is dropping whatever. But even if it's a short circuit, there's still something. There's resistance from the wire, which drops some voltage. A little bit, but enough. All it has to be is less. So by the time it gets all the way over here, yeah, we're tracing the positive current but this voltage is higher than this voltage. That means it's a difference going this way. Remember, voltage is always a difference. So if this is 120 volts out here, let's say it's 119 here, by the time it gets out here, it's 20. You know, it's mostly used up. You know, it's heading back towards home base to recharge. So in 119 and 20, it's going in the lower direction. So even though this diode is pointed this way, it's the, the current is still trying to flow in this direction. When you're coming out of the power supply, it tries to flow here and it's blocked. And then you have the voltage difference still trying to make it flow this way and it's blocked. So the power goes down this way. See, no electric field over here yet, so that one's unblocked, so it goes right on through. Same thing here. It tries to go both ways. So the diode is pointing in the correct direction, but the power on this end has gone through the power supply, one diode dropped a little bit, and there. But then you also have the load drop, you have this diode dropping, because every diode has a forward voltage drop of 0.3 to 0.7 or so volts. So again, whatever the values are, this side is higher than this side, which means it's trying to flow this way, because it always flows downhill, and the diode blocks flow going that way. So the power starts going out the only way it can back to the negative. So that is how it makes it go in that direction. Now, what about when we flip the power supply? Now the current is flowing the other direction. See? So this is the other half of the wave going up, down, up, down. So now we essentially have negative voltage. So let's trace it the same way. Out the positive end, up through here. This diode blocks it. It goes this way. Right here. This diode blocks it. It goes this way. And oh look, it's going in the top of wire again. Now we get down here, back to here. Right? And now it's trying to go both ways. And remember, we're out the power supply here, so we've got a nice high voltage. Then we've gone through the load and back here, so on this side it's a low voltage. So even though the diode is facing this way, the potential difference, the voltage, higher over here because it's fresh out the power supply, lower over here because it's gone through the load, which means it wants to go from high to low this way, which is opposite the diode, which means it blocks it. So we go up through here. See, it's a fresh diode, no electric field there yet. Tries to go here, same thing. We've gone from power supply through a single diode into here, so we've got a higher voltage on this end. Then we've gone to the load, we've gone to this diode, and now we're over here with the lower voltage. It wants to go this way, diode doesn't let it, so it goes this way, back to the negative end of the power. And that is the absolute genius of simply sticking four diodes in a diamond. Two different current directions here magically become one. And that's rectification. The transformer part before is what's called a step-down transformer that turns your wall voltage into something gentler for a computer. That'll be its own topic. And then after this is to make the rectified voltage a nice, mostly smooth line so that the circuits are happier, so that the integrated circuits are happier. That is, again, its own topic. For right now, just admire these four heroic diodes. And now, a quick demonstration in an actual circuit. So our ingredients are simple. We have a power supply. The red is positive. The black is negative. 
Then we have four diodes, just simple little diodes. Of all the devices I've used so far, these are the ones where it's the hardest to tell which way is positive because they're just so small. So just look at your documentation very carefully to figure it out or use the diode test mode on your multimeter or plug in your power supply with a very low voltage and you'll be all right. So let's get our four diodes set up like this. And I'll have them all set up so that their current flow is from left to right, just to make it a little easier. And then finally, our load, which is going to be an LED. So first I'll confirm the LED is working. We'll connect it directly to the power. I'll give it five volts and one milliamp. And it lights up, so we know it's working. So now we do our rectification circuit. So the first thing we do is connect the output of one diode to the input of the second diode. So output of diode one to input of diode two. Connect that junction to one side of the power. Then the same for the third, the output of the third to the input of the fourth, and that junction to the other end of the power. So that connects the power. So we have the output of diode one to the input of diode two, output of diode three to the input of diode four. So we'll now take the input of diode one, and yes, I am following the diagram. This is a little too complex to do off the top of my head. The input of diode one to the input of diode three. and that junction which is going to be the negative end that's going to generate the negative DC to the negative end of our LED. Then we connect the output of diode 2 to the output of diode 4 and that junction is going to generate the positive DC power. Connect that to the positive end of our LED. And now we find out whether I've done it right. So I've done that side right. Now you see before this was two point some volts just to get the LED to light with one milliamp going through it. Now it's 3.8. We've got four diodes, current is going through them, and there's a forward voltage drop that you have to account for. So you lose power doing this, but you gain this. Let's reverse it. That was the positive side of our waveform. All I'm going to do is take out these power cables and flip them. I'm not going to do anything else. Just going to put the power cables in backwards to demonstrate the negative end. Remember, I haven't moved the LED. It's not going to work in the wrong direction. But if I turn on one milliamp, it lights up. We have now rectified our current so that no matter which way I plug this in, it gets fixed to a single direction. So that is rectification in electronics. We'll talk about the transformers that can change the voltage before it becomes DC while it's still AC in another video. And we'll talk about smoothing the signal if you need to. Sometimes you don't need to, but usually you'll need to so that you have a nice clean input. And we'll talk about how to do that in yet another video. Many more to come. Until then, be seeing you.